Hello, hello. It looks like I am live. Dr. Andy here. Um, soon as some people show up, maybe they'll tell me. Oh, that didn't work at all. Okay, never mind. Won't change that right now. Um, welcome, welcome, welcome. It is Friday afternoon. Just got off the radio show. We had a fun, fun, fun show um, with one of the most magical people I know. One of the, I, I adore Marsha Webb um, with all my heart. And she came on. We talked horses. We talked horse magic. And she uh, works with, plays with, bees with this herd of horses that were so excited to be on the radio um, with me. And I was excited to have them all. So head over to your favorite podcast platform. Um, Google Dr. Andy's World. It should be up there shortly. Because uh, like I said, we just finished it. And then I check my hair a little bit and hop on over here. So today, uh, what shall we talk about? And actually, this has been popping for over a week. And I'm like, okay, well, I've got to get it out of my head. So I guess the world will hear about it. Um, we're going to talk about having balls with your animals. Not playing ball with your dog, but having balls with your animal. And this actually popped last week. I was on a webinar with some dear friends, Neely Piazza and um, Dee Dee, and I'm blanking on Dee Dee's last name, but Raw Dog Food and Company. Um, that's where I get my raw meat um, for my kiddos. Hi, Neely. And uh, I was just talking about you. And Dee Dee was talking about if your animal ate something that your dog ate something that you know it ate um, and what you do about it. And if it was, let's say, a cooked bone that they should not have gotten into because they get in the trash or, um, you know, maybe part of a toy, you know, they eat an arm off of a stuffed animal, is you pack it with food. That's not really the point that caught my attention was then she says, and I love this, she goes, you just got to have some balls. You're going to have to pack that food and you're going to have to wait for it to pass. And I went, huh, do people really have balls to do it would actually be the easiest, which actually would be the least expensive. Thank you, Mercer Moffat. Ah, thank you. Helping me out. Um, my dear friend, Didi and I, yeah. Uh, raw dog food and company. Google it. Uh, do we have, do we really have the balls to stand there and wait for something to pass through our dog to do what could, could create the most ease to do what actually would be the less, least expensive to do what would be the least dramatic because if you actually did something like that and I'll, I have another story here in a second and you stood in your knowing and you created the space and you waited and you did it even if you were unsure and you did it that and you sat there with the fear, which is not real. And I don't know if we're going to get into that or not, but this is, do you have the balls to do something like that with your animal? Or do you wuss out and go off to your veterinarian so they handle it? Hi, Sue! And then they handle it. And then if things go wrong, you can blame them. I really, I've been looking at this energy for many, many years because I find it fascinating what people rush into with their animals, namely their dogs, cats, name, you know, namely them. They rush into stuff instead of taking a breath. Um, they rush into the most expensive, most significant thing they can do because that would mean the most and it would prove how much they love their animals. That's what I get the energy is. And it's so interesting that you would choose that. Because what if you just had some balls? <laughs> and everywhere I agree with your point of view, fun pock, fun pock, right? Like, huh. And that's also, I have been working on my points of view. Because the more I resist and react, everyone just running off to their vet for every little thing holds that all in place. Because, oh yeah, we talk about energy and we talk about consciousness. If you've not come across Dr. Andy before, um, I 
I love the energy behind stuff. Um, and what is it that, what is the energy that motivates us to choose stuff? And how much do we love the drama and trauma? Like my, okay. This just hit me. This is so funny. Okay, so if you have this story, my dog got a hold of um, an arm of a stuffed animal. I saw, they swallowed it. What would you choose? I personally, like what Didi was talking about, would have balls and pack it with food. And actually, I do remember that. I had forgotten that. So when she told that story, and I'm like, yes, I need to remember that. Um, I need to recall that. I might need that. That's awesome information. Not, oh my God, could I do that? Oh my God, what would happen if I didn't? Oh my God, I better ask my vet. No, I'm going to go in my knowing. That energy popped like, oh yeah, I have to, re I have to recall that when I need that. That's how I be with my animals. How do you be with your animals? Do you have the balls to do something like that? Or would you rather have a story to tell your coworkers on Monday morning that Friday evening your animal ate an arm off a stuffed animal and you had to go to the ER and they had to do surgery because they weren't sure if it was gonna pass and it cost you $5,000 and oh, that's a much more interesting story than, yeah, my dog ate a arm off stuffed animal. I actually, he was so happy he got second dinner and he pooped it out on Sunday. Like how invested are you in your stories? Andy, Dr. Andy, you're just making this too easy. That's just not how it goes. You, you really have to, what if it isn't? Um, <laughs> um, you know, it, it, what if it can be that much ease? What if it doesn't have to be that dramatic or that significant? Or what if it's you choosing to stand in your knowing instead of going somewhere so they can do it so you have someone to blame if it goes wrong. That's pretty dramatic energy, Andy. I can't believe you said that. And yet, have you sat down and really looked at it for yourself? All right, Neely, yeah, listen to your last podcast. I think that's where she was talking about having balls. Um, and Neely had the hanger corgi, um, Henry upside down and shake the drumstick out of his throat multiple times. Um, I actually, we had a red doby named Caesar. He was a rescue. He came to live us at four. Uh, the first week we had him, he looked me in the eye and peed down the side of the wall of the house. I'm like, okay, what do we got here? So this was only a few months into our new relationship of him living in the house. He actually was a sweet boy and we worked it all out. He figured out that I came in handy because I did most of the feeding. So yeah, you know. We were having dinner. We were had my mother and father-in-law, the two boys, my husband and I. So there's six of us around this little table. And luckily, Colby, who was like nine at the time, goes, what's Caesar eating? And we realized that the lid was left open to the trash and he had gotten, um, hi Regan, um, got a hold of a Cornish hen cooked skeleton and he was eating the bones. I was on the far side of that dining room table. I flew across the room, stuck my hand down his throat this far up and scraped all of that back out. Nobody else moved at the table. <laughs> they are all like silent. And then this is the kicker. I drop, I throw that wherever I threw it and I go back in for more. I'm like, Oh no, we're not swallowing that. Oh no, I don't know this dog well enough. He could have lost his mind and bit me. I'm not going, mm -mm. and I handled it. Do you have the balls to handle it? Do you have the balls to turn your dog upside down to shake drumsticks out of it? Or would you rather, oh, he ate it, now what do I do? I guess I, <laughs> I am in a mood. You know, get me talking about having balls with your animals. Um, I, Here's another comment. Maybe it's because we take all the responsibility, and so if something happens, it's our fault. Right? Are you willing to be at what it's, and it's such a judgment to be at complete fault if something goes wrong. Yeah, um, your animals evolve too, right? And what if whatever goes wrong is actually not wrong? And what if it's a choice on the animal's part? Um, and that is a much bigger conversation for another day, not necessarily a Facebook Live. 
But yeah, are you willing to have balls with your animals? Are you willing to be, oh my God, can I do this and stand there and do it? Right? Are you willing to Google some stuff? Are you willing to call some different vets offices and see if you can get any other information before you go running off? Are you like, what are you willing to do? And are you willing to have balls with your animals? And are you willing to file away if they eat something inappropriate, I pack it with food to get it to move through? That makes, like, how much sense does that make? It's like brilliant. Especially if you're dealing with, hi Keisha, if you're dealing with, hi Brian, especially if you're dealing with something um, like getting a stuffed animal arm back out or bones back out, because you can make them vomit. There's the other way to go with things, right? Are you willing to make your animal vomit? You know, in a, in a very, you, you know what happened at a certain timeline. And you know what? What if you have to consider everything before you choose? When did this happen? How did this happen? Which animal did this? You know, okay, I know this one did it in the last 10 minutes. Cool, I'm gonna make them vomit up these pills. Google, tell me how. Are you willing to have balls like that? These are all hypotheticals. These are not actual um, vet, veterinary um, guidelines to follow. I am not a veterinarian. This is all energetic. This is all getting you to become aware of what you're willing and not willing to do and be with your animals. Are you willing to have balls with your animals? Are you willing to take a breath and wait a day before you decide on a $12,000 surgery? Are you willing to go get a second opinion? Are you willing to have your animals back and know they would prefer to leave their body? Keisha say, I'm totally willing, yes. Are we willing to have some balls with our animals? Are we willing to actually have their back? Have their back. And how it turns out is how it turns out. Because you have choice and they have choice. That means, yeah, no more blame game. I took them over here because I'm supposed to see this person and this person did this and it went wrong so I can blame them forever. That's a fun energy to live with. This is throwing out a different energy that you could choose to be with your animals. And you can always choose to go, no, I don't have balls with my animals in this 10 seconds. I need to do X, Y, and Z. But maybe the next time I'm like, I do have balls with my animals this time. I'm going to do A, B, and C. And what if every time is different and every time you have choice and every time you can ask a question? This is not, there is no... Every time something happens, you do X, Y, Z. What if we stopped living from that reality? That when something happens, A, that you do B and C happens. What if the linearity is gone? Especially now. All of our predictability, all of our linearity, all of what we can bank on and depend on. What if it's all gone? I am talking a little bigger of a picture now. Yes, and our critters are freaking potent creators. And what if some of this stuff that goes wrong is actually them asking you to step up? Step up in having their back. Step up in what you know about what you know about. Step up and choose what's going to work for you and your animals. Not just, well, the vet said. Okay, I think I blasted some of you out of the water. <laughs> that got a, that, I, I know I was going to talk about having balls with your animals, but I, it's always fun where the universe and the energy goes. Um, and I, I know the cute little hearts kind of gave you, um, it was a little more potent than I had, I, I, I had thought it was going to come out as. So anybody have any quick um, questions, comments, um, 
<laughs> I got a little, I got some happy faces on that one, some smiley faces. Um, oh, back to asking questions, back to stepping into your knowing. And what would it take to have balls with your animals? All right, my friends. <laughs> Won't we all go have a drink? It is Friday evening. You may not be going out for happy hour, but what if you created it home? Enjoyed your animals. And until we get together next time, what if it's your points of view that create your animals? Mwah! Oh, yeah. And I'll be back. Same page, Dr. Andy Harper. You know where you're at because you're here on Tuesday, 11.05 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. And I have no idea what I talk about then either because I'm having fun with that. And if you're having fun with me, come join me. If not, that's okay too. We all have choice. All right, my friends, until next time. Mm. How much fun can you have with your animals? Mm.